One of the special things about the RuneScape is that there are so many activities you can do and so much content to explore and so many ways to play. There are so many grinds as well and achievements that take hours and hours and countless more hours to grind. So inevitably for all players, this comes with an eventual burnout where we get tired of doing the same grinds over and over again, but we still want to play. And when this happens, it's good to take a break with some less intensive activities, maybe in less intensive grinds that still benefit us, still move our character forward a little bit, but uh, don't burn you out as much and give you a break from more tiring activities. In this video, I'm going to go over a few of my favorites. There are countless AFK activities you can do, and it's way too much to cover in one video, so I want to keep it short and sweet and go over some of my favorites. Good day, everybody. I myself am at a point where my PVM progression is a little stunted. Um, I play on an Iron Man only now, which means that to progress further in my gear, ability, setup, etc., I have uh, several long grinds ahead of me at various bosses that are difficult that I'm still learning. So in between my uh, learning bosses like Raksha, I am taking a break, but still advancing my character a little bit with some of my favorite AFK activities. So I know many of you are in the same boat, and there might be some info here that many of you know or don't know already, but let's dive in. By the way, this video is timestamped, so if you're not interested in a particular topic, you can skip ahead to another one. And right off the bat, I would like to say that since most of my suggestions here are skilling related, if it is at all possible, have a Grace of the Elves and Brooch of the Gods with you before you start these. Uh, you will get a lot of nice invention components and a lot of other rare materials from the Saren Spirits and, of course, a shot at Hazelmere Signet Ring. Um, even if you're semi-paying attention or if you're playing with your volume on, uh, you'll hear the sounds of the Blessing of the Gods or the Saren Spirit come up, and you can just collect as you skill. Okay, number one is the Dream of Aya, and this has to be my very favorite AFK activity. Uh, the requirements for getting here are a little bit steep in that you have to do a lot of quests, or at least just the extinction quest. Here in the Dream of Aya, the rundown is that you use Anachronia resources uh, to stock various skilling stations. And there are skilling stations for herb lore, construction, fishing, hunter, fletching, crafting. Experience in these stations is stored at a rate of two Anachronia resources per one experience point in the skill and the most anachronia resources you can have in any one uh, particular resource <laughs> is 150. Um, there are six anachronia resources that each correspond to one of the different stations. So once you accumulate about 150 or less than that, you can go here and stock up your station, and each station can hold up to 350,000 experience. What I typically do is wait until... Um, at this point, my character is maxed, by the way, so the only station I'm interested in is Herblore. I wait until my Herblore station has like over 300,000 experience, and then I just sit there for a while. The experience rates at these stations are pretty decent, um, but still it takes a while to go through that much experience. You also get a handful of very useful rewards uh, from skilling at these stations. You get resource packs for other Anachronia resources. You can get the Amulet of Salamancy, which helps you uh, slay dinosaurs and Rex Matriarchs, which is awesome. Uh, you also get bone pipe and upgraded bone pipe uh, components very rarely. I think uh, more rarely than they used to be. Um, but the bone pipe here is the only reason that this iron account can do any kind of high level range because other high level range weapons are uh, much less accessible. So um, that has been a savior. The other big saving grace of Dream of Aya for at least iron accounts is uh, I have a full Anachronia dinosaur farm now thanks to this, because you get dinosaur eggs of all kinds for your Anachronia dinosaur farm. So uh, for a main account, not that big a deal. You can just sell them for a little chunk of money. But for irons, it's the only good way, I think, to fill up your Anachronia dinosaur farm. Uh, the other saving grace for irons especially, but uh, also money saving for a lot of players, is the sheer amount of experience you can get in a skill that is hard to train, like construction or herb lore, uh, that is otherwise expensive or just resource intensive. My herblore level you can see here is 107, and that's really just from Dream of Aya, or I'll, I should say 95% from Dream of Aya, or just over time, um, and daily challenges. By the way, while I'm on the subject, um, one thing to know if you're not maxed yet, one reason to be maxed other than the regular benefits is that you can toggle off all challenges, all skill challenges except for one by talking to a challenge master. So that way if you're maxed but you're going for one level 120 in particular, like herblore, 
You can just get three daily challenges for that skill. Unrelated, but good to know anyways. You can also get strange rocks and golden rocks at the Dream of Aya for those respective statues that take a long time to complete over and over again and get those respective achievements. Actually, I think all the activities I mentioned here are eligible for strange rock and golden rock drops. Number two on my list is a very useful activity, divination, and specifically gathering divine energy for divine charges. If you are playing on an iron account, this is the only way you will get divine charges. If you are not, you can make divine energy yourself and sell it for a little bit of cash. Uh, ideally, you do this at the incandescent wisps at level 95 divination. If you're not there yet, just train up to it. You will need divination anyways. Uh, you'll need level 80 divination if you're not there yet for invention to unlock that, and level 90 divination will unlock a ports adventurer. Both very important things. And once you have the invention level for it, level 107, I believe, using the divine energy vacuum is the best way to go. To use that, you just make empty divine charges at a workbench using simple parts, and then you go to a divine um, energy location, a spring, whatever you call it, Anyways, and you just harvest away. If you can do incandescent energy at level 95 divination, world 79 is the best because that is the official world for training divination there, and the enriched springs are almost always active because there are so many players here dumping uh, chronicles and stuff into the rift that the enriched spring is, yeah, it has an uptime of like 90%, so that is the best way to do that. Incandescent energy specifically is holding steady at just under 300 GP each, to my surprise. I thought that would have gotten down more after wilderness events, but um, that makes the cost of one divine charge using incandescent energy a little over 60k, and if you're adding 100 of these to your pack, that's about 6 million, so um, yeah, you'll save either time or make a little money doing this, and it is very easy at specifically the enriched springs in at incandescent wisps because you can just sit there for about five minutes at a time uninterrupted especially if you have a vacuum uh really only if you have a vacuum if not i would suggest getting the archaeology relic to dump memories quickly a little more intensive that way but until you get the invention level for the vacuum it's still not the most intensive activity you can do next up number three is arc skilling now the arc merits an entire guide of its own, so I'm not going to go too deep into it here, otherwise this video would be a lot longer, but uh, the gist is that there is a lot of skilling you can do in the arc, and it does require higher level skills uh, in a variety of them, like mining, farming, woodcutting, fishing, and cooking, and more. Around the arc islands themselves, like Goshima or Twilight, um, I don't know how to pronounce any of these actually, or the islands that once were turtles. <laughs> Uh, the skill requirements are a little bit lower and you get inferior versions of a lot of resources, uh, typically level 90 in the respective skills required. If you, if you go to Uncharted Islands, you can find random resource spawns for the lower level ones and the higher level resource spots that require between level 94 and 97 of the respective skill. The reasons to skill here are various. And there are really only a few cases where this might benefit you. Uh, number one, if you are going for golden rocks or strange rocks, uh, you can get those here. Uh, number two, if you're going for the salty title or for just the title or the trend completion escape, or if you think you might at some point, you will need a lot, a lot, a lot of chimes and taijutsu. So you'll be exploring a lot of uncharted islands and you'll want to be making a lot of shark soups when you get the levels for it because that is the best way to acquire a ton of chimes. Uh, now, a lot of the ingredients that require gathering to make shark soups are not AFKable, really, like uh, hunting the turtles. Uh, which, once you have the hunter level for it, is a really, really good, uh, one of the best sources of hunter experience in the game at high levels until you hit 99, but uh, definitely not AFK and definitely not chill. But that brings me to a reason number three that you might want to do arc skilling, is that if you're close to maxing one of the, one of the skills used in the arc, uh, the best experience rates really for all of them are in the arc. Maybe except for farming, but that's just passive, nice AFK experience anyways. One tip I have is that if you're not uh, picky about which skills you want to train here, there are ways to make and gather shark soup ingredients that are completely AFK. Uh, so you can gather ancestral energy, and as you're island hopping, make sure to, if you can, claim an island with a flag that has a lot of ancestral energy spawns and a lot of Alea sea salt uh, crab spawns. This is because using Divine Energy and Alea Salt, you can transmute materials into almost everything that you need for a soup. You can transmute the salt into Wabagong oil. You can transmute Wabagong oil into shiny turtle shells. 
And then the only thing you need after that to gather is uh, bamboo to turn into bundles of bamboo, preferably from golden bamboo. And mushrooms, which you forage and slice also in the arc. This is something that I've been AFKing lately because I'm going for a mixture of my little objectives here. I am going for strange and golden rocks very slowly. I am also just trying to chip away at the Wyco Rewards shop for the salty title that I know eventually I'll be going for anyways. And it is a much nicer grind and a much nicer thing to do if you're not in a rush for it and you just chip away at it as you have time to. Number four is archaeology. This is one of the easiest and the most beneficial to AFK of any skill in the game. Um, again, well, I actually do have a full guide for archaeology, and I'm not going to go too deep into it here, because uh, again, that would make this an additionally longer video, but there are tons of benefits to archaeology, and it is very easy to AFK, especially at higher levels, and especially if you can get your hands on a Grace of the Elves and put a bunch of porters in it. You can effectively just sit at a plot for until the logout timer kicks in. Um, especially at higher level plots where it takes longer than five minutes to dig up a relic or it takes uh, quite a while to dig up any relics, you can just sit there for a very long time. For more info on archaeology and all its benefits and all that you can do with it, um, I do suggest checking out my other video, but for now I'll leave it here because it is uh, extremely beneficial and easy. Number five is not skilling, but combat. AFK combat to be specific. Um, a lot of people already AFK Slayer, in fact that's one of the primary methods of training that skill in combat in general, but there are a lot of bosses that you can AFK as well to a lot of benefit. One that I'd recommend the most is the Arc Glacor. This one, if you disable all mechanics, or maybe you just leave one mechanic enabled, uh, it's very easily AFKable even at lower levels, gets you pretty good combat experience. Uh, since this is normal mode, it also counts as a Glacor Slayer task and actually has pretty decent Slayer experience rates. And the common drops from this guy are pretty good even with no mechanics. You can get Elder Troves, even up to tier 3. You can get Scripture of Wen Pages, Ancient Effigies, useful for training a number of uh, hard to train skills. And is really easy even with a very minimal combat setup. Uh, melee is especially easy if you have a Scrimshaws of Vampirism because you will never die. You will always heal way more than you need to and can sustain this for really as long as you'd like. Another one that I've been doing lately is a little bit less accessible, but uh, Rathus, the Rex Matriarch of range. Uh, my iron here is one spear piece away from completing Laniakia's spear, so uh, every time I get a dinosaur slayer task, I go there. I find this one AF cable with melee barely, and sometimes I have to Excalibur, but with my setup here, uh, with the Necklace of Salamancy and the Slayer Helmet bonuses, um, I can kill Rathus before he does his healing mechanic, so... It leads to about 40 second kills or so, um, and I really don't have to pay attention at all. Like I said, sometimes if I'm unlucky, my health will drop too low, but Excalibur fixes that. Depending on your gear, setup abilities, whatever, you can AFK more complex bosses as well, but at the very least, anything at God Wars Dungeon 1 is afk -able if you're going for any logs or anything like that passively. Uh, so yeah, keep in mind that you can still boss and PVM in that way while not really paying attention and not getting too intensive with it. Last up on my list, number six is Ithil Harps in Prif. Uh, these are last on my list because although they are useful for a number of reasons, their use uh, kind of runs out, in my opinion, after you've collected enough harmonic dust. Uh, now, after you unlock Prif, you will need a lot of harmonic dust for a variety of things. Eventually, in theory, you'll need 4,000 dust to upgrade your teleport crystal. That is the first thing I recommend you do if you haven't done that yet. It is amazing and I wouldn't do a lot of things without it. You'll also need 4,000 dust each for a crystal mata, crystal hatchet, and crystal pickaxe if you're getting those. And then regular or attuned elf equipment and tools will require about 1,000 to 2,000 harmonic dust each. So um, if you haven't already started collecting harmonic dust yet, you will need it. And aside from that, um, and besides the Dream of Aya crafting station, Ithil Harps offer the best AFK crafting experience that you don't really have to pay attention to too much, and the minor construction experience when you retune the harps. Uh, this is also the easiest source of golden rocks and strange rocks, again, aside from Dream of Aya. So um, it is useful, especially if you still need to level crafting and if you need harmonic dust, but aside from that, uh, I think there are better things to AFK. And that's all. That's all for my list this time. Like I said earlier, there are a variety of 
Things you can do AFK and RuneScape to pass the time and progress yourself forward. Some honorable mentions are mining with stone spirits and juju potions, or smithing, like smithing masterwork, or uh, getting the artisan workshop respect in that way. Anyways, share what you liked AFK that isn't covered here. Um, it'll maybe help other players too. And if there's interest, I can make a part two of this video as well to cover more uh, useful AFK things you can do. But for now, um, let's be a community. Share what you AFK and what you find most helpful. If you've made it this far and you're still watching, thank you very much. I very much appreciate your support. And please consider liking this video if you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this. And subscribing to my channel. And I'll catch you in the next one.